Hi everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install macOS Monterey or other versions of macOS on your PC in just five steps. macOS Monterey brings some slight improvements over Big Sur, and with it comes another update to my Hackintosh guide. If you need any assistance at any point in the video, please check the links in the description below. The first step of the process is to check the link in the description below to see if all of your hardware is supported in the version of macOS that you want to install. For example, if I have an Intel i7-8700K and an AMD RX 580, I can see that both of them are supported in macOS Monterey. Keep in mind that this guide is for desktop PCs only, not laptops and other types of devices. This guide is based on the Dotania guide, which gets constant updates all the time. If you want to use the original guide instead of this video, or if you want to install macOS on a non-desktop PC device, please check the link in the description for that. You'll also need a 4GB USB driver larger and an internet connection. Ethernet is strongly preferred, but if you have a macOS supported Wi-Fi card, you can choose to use that as well. Now before we get started, please keep a few things in mind. Number one, we'll be erasing all of the data off of the drive that we want to install macOS on, so if you have any important data, make sure to move it off the drive before we get started. Number two, hackintoshing is not always a straightforward process, so be prepared to do research and troubleshooting on your own. Don't expect it to be a smooth process. Lastly, if macOS Monterey doesn't work for some reason, try installing an older version of macOS. Monterey is still fairly new, and so there are still a lot of things that need to be ironed out. Now let's begin hackintoshing. To start, we'll need to install Python in order to run some programs. There's a link in the description that you can use to download the latest version of Python. When you install it, make sure that you check install to the path. Alternatively, you can try downloading Python from the Microsoft Store if it doesn't work. We'll be running an open core script to download macOS recovery files. Download open core package from the link in the description below, extract the folder and navigate to utilities. Hold shift and right click on the Mac recovery folder and then select copy as path. Open a command prompt by pressing the Windows key and typing CMD. Type CD and then space, then paste and press enter. This will get us into the Mac recovery folder. Now, depending on the macOS version that you want to install, you'll type in different things. Follow the link in the description for downloading macOS and scroll down a little bit until you see some macOS versions and some code. Copy the line of code for the macOS version that you want and paste it into the command line. It will begin to download some necessary files for macOS. While that's downloading, download Rufus from the link in the description below. When you open it, select the USB drive that you're going to make the installer on and change the boot selection to non-bootable, partition scheme to GPT, file system as FAT32, and format. After it finishes formatting, open up the USB folder and delete the contents inside. Next, make a new folder called com.apple.recovery.boot. Once the macOS recovery files are done downloading, open up OpenCore package, then utilities, then Mac recovery, and you'll see two files that either start with base system or recovery image. Move both into the folder that you just created. Then open the OpenCore package folder again, then x64, and move the EFI folder inside onto the USB stick. The remaining work will be done in this folder. Now before we add files, we'll need to clean it up a little bit. Open up the E5 folder, then OC, then drivers, and remove everything except for open runtime.efi. Go back into the OC folder and open the tools folder, and remove everything except for openshell.efi. Now we'll begin downloading the necessary files to boot macOS. Download hfsplus.efi from the description and move it into the drivers folder under efi slash OC. HFS Plus is needed to see HFS volumes such as our macOS installer. Next, we'll need to download some KEXTs or kernel extensions. These are things that help facilitate how our hardware is interpreted in macOS. All of the KEXTs are linked in the description below, and all of them will go in the EFI slash OC slash KEXTs folder on our USB stick. Start with Virtual SMC. This emulates the SMC on real Macs, and it's even necessary in order for us to boot. Download the release version, and if you're using an Intel CPU, move Virtual SMC, 
SMC processor and SMC Super I.O. into the Kext folder. If you're running an AMD CPU, only move Virtual SMC. Next, we'll need to download Lilu. Download the release version and move over the Kext into the Kext folder. We'll also need Whatever Green, which will handle graphics related things for our Hackintosh, Apple ALC, which will handle audio, and if you're using an Intel based system, you'll also need USB Inject All as well. AMB users and non ASRock motherboards that are Skylake and above do not need USB Inject All. If you have a motherboard that is H370, B360, H310, X79, X99, or an ASRock motherboard running an Intel chip that is not B460 or Z490 and above, you'll also need XHCI unsupported. You'll also need an Ethernet Kext, which depends on the type of Ethernet port that you have. I have Realtek Gigabit Ethernet, so I'll download Realtek RTL8111. I'll leave a link in the description that guides you on which one to choose. Additionally, if you have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, I'll also leave a guide to Kexts in the description below. We'll also need SSDTs, which patch certain things about our system in order to make them work in macOS. This time around, however, I've actually made a video guide on how to obtain SSDTs for your Hackintosh, so please go watch that from the description below and come back once you're done. The last step before getting ready to boot is the config.plist. In the open core folder, under the docs folder, there's a file called sample.plist. Move that to your EFI slash OC folder on your USB drive and rename it to config.plist all lowercase. In order to easily edit the values, we'll need to use proper tree. Download proper tree from the link in the description below, run proper tree.bat and open your config.plist with it. Press Ctrl Shift R and point it at your EFI slash OC folder to import all of your files into the config. If you add or remove any files in your EFI folder, make sure that you repeat this process. The next part of the config.plist is specific to each generation of CPU, so I will leave a link in the description on how to continue. Select your CPU generation from the options to configure it and make sure that you configure the BIOS settings as well. I'd recommend pausing the video and doing that and then coming back to this video to continue the installation process. All right, now we're ready to boot and install macOS. Shut down your PC and boot off of your USB drive using the boot menu. When you reach an open core menu, boot off of the first option. You'll see a bunch of text scrolling on the screen and then you should boot into macOS recovery. We'll first need to erase our drive to install macOS. Begin by opening disk utility and selecting view and then show all devices at the top. Next, select the name of your drive and erase the disk. Format it as GUID partition table and APFS. Once it's done erasing, back out of disk utility and continue with the installation. You will need to have an internet connection in order to install macOS. It could take anywhere from 30 minutes to a few hours. Once it's done installing, it will automatically reboot several times. Each time it reboots, make sure that you're booting off of your USB stick and open core will handle the rest. You'll then be able to go through the regular setup like a normal Mac. If Apple ID doesn't work, just skip it for now. And now we're in macOS. There's one last thing that we need to do to complete the Hackintosh, and that's to move our EFI folder from our USB stick onto our SSD, that way we don't have to continuously boot off of our USB stick. Start by downloading Mount EFI and open it. If it shows an error about security, open System Preferences and then click Security and click Open Anyway. Choose option B to mount the EFI volume of your SSD, then open Finder and drag the EFI folder from your USB stick to the mounted EFI volume on the SSD. Once you're done, shut down your PC, unplug your USB stick, and you should be able to boot off of your SSD now. Now that you're done, there are a few more things that you can do. 
If you want to get custom boot icons like a real Mac, you can choose to follow my guide here. If you want to dual boot Mac OS and Windows on the same drive, you can choose to follow my guide here. If you're having any trouble hackintoshing, I will leave a link to a Google Doc with tons of resources and links for hackintoshing. Additionally, you can join my Discord from the link in the description and ask me questions there. Good luck on your hackintoshing journey and stay safe.